Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from Skill Builder. I'm out for a little walk and uh, I'm going to take you with me and show you a few things which I hope you'll find interesting. Repointing. A lot of people, they say if you repoint an old lime and mortar building with sand and cement, it's the kiss of death. But actually, that's not quite true. The sand and lime is more forgiving, obviously, and it allows the building to move without cracking, which is great. Putting in a weakish sand and cement mortar, bit of lime in it, doesn't trap the moisture in in any meaningful way, provided the bricks aren't the kind of bricks that spool. You'll see examples of a brickwork where it has spalled, that is actually still sand and lime. That's nothing to do with pointing. That's never been pointed. It's got an old slate damp proof course on it. It's still perfectly all right, but you can see that some of those old red rubbers or soft red bricks have spalled. And that's a fact of life. That's gonna happen. The pointing isn't to blame. So you get a lovely old brick cottage like that and then you see that somebody's decided to paint it. It's nice to have bright colours. I know that those buildings in Bristol, it's an actual architectural feature now. You have to think very, very carefully about painting brickwork. It means they've got a maintenance issue forever. All the advice is from the Brick Development Association, even from the people like Santix, is don't paint brickwork. It's not a great idea. Actually, that's not even painted. That's one of those awful spray-on textured coatings that they come along and they tell you that if you spray that on you'll be maintenance free for life and it'll never fade. Now I actually went to the house of a guy that had that company and his house was opulent beyond belief. I mean he made millions and millions of pounds out of doing that kind of job. He probably charged about 10,000 quid to do a job like that. Somebody decided that they were going to brick up a doorway. It's nice. So I know we can't all live in old houses full of character, but when you look at this, the way that they've abruptly gone from one to these very unimaginative looking properties that they could build fairly cheaply, it's a bit of a shame. But a hundred years ago, people had the time, the energy and the imagination to put on all that feature brickwork, all that nice, the coins on the corner, all that corbelling, and then we just go and build the laziest, quickest thing we can. All about making money. So here's a bit of cracked brickwork. Very often what happens is that they crack towards the corners, which is a little bit baffling. I've never really understood why brick walls crack at the returns or close to the returns. You know, there's a whole wall there. They reckon that what you should do is a maximum of six meters of brickwork and then put a movement joint in. But of course, let's think about this. Back then, that was all built in sand and lime. So the movement was there anyway. So here you see rust marks along where they've rendered that wall, basically because they've used a bit of galvanized beading along the edge. Rather than using a stainless steel one, they've used galvanized, and that does create those rust marks. This is a railway bridge built over a hundred years ago for the Reading Line. A lot of all this stuff was Brunel's territory, really. I'm not saying Brunel built this bridge. Basically the same as those ones they built out near Maidenhead, Reading Arches. They've put some big steels across there, bolted them in to tie that brickwork together. I don't know why. Sometimes you see that protecting it in case a lorry comes along and bashes the bridge. When you look at the bridge and look at the way it's constructed and you look at that arch with all the soldiers, they look like they're doing a good job. There's another example of buildings built over 100 years ago. Just a bit of interest for the bricklayers doing those coins and doing the arches. And they've obviously just pointed up those bits of stonework on the bays there and made no attempt whatsoever to match that pointing into the stonework. Such a shame. That's my son. There he goes. He's doing circuits two miles uphill. I'm going to get back to running soon. Well, lovely old Rygate stone houses, beautifully built, coins all the way up, look like they're doing all right. And then maybe they knock some down or whatever, and they built this in the 70s, which is a block of flats. It just makes me wonder what the point of planning permission is. I just think they could have done something slightly better. It just annoys me that you want to put a scheme together, you want to put it through the planners, and they just make you jump through hoops to do things that they consider to be aesthetically acceptable, but nobody else does. All the worst building in this country took place after they introduced planning consent. Staining on monocouche. These buildings are hardly any age at all. And you can see all down the bottom there where the algae's forming, the water's been running down, and it just looks horrible, doesn't it? 
Now I brought you this way because I want to show you what is one of my least favourite buildings in the whole of Rygate. And although you might think, oh that's nice, look they've made an effort there, they've put a nice tower on there. Some architect's bold vision, no doubt, of what you can do. But look at it, just look at the way that the water has run down the brickwork. The whole thing is looking pretty shabby. So you look at the top of those parapets, they've just basically forgotten the basic rule of putting some kind of decent overhang to shed the water. So what you've got is not only staining but you've got all the pointing has been washed out of that brickwork somebody's got to get some scaffolding and they've got to do some major work there repointing that whole gable end you can see it's just horrible all the way around now this is something you see quite a lot around here which is the tin lid, the top that they put on so that they can do the loft conversion without worrying about the weather. And although that's maybe 5,000 quid's worth of scaffolding there, it does make the job easier. I reckon I'm probably going to change it to a gable end if you look at the house next door. The house next door has got a hipped roof. I wouldn't be surprised if they're not going to take that roof off and then just stand the end up vertically to give them a gable end. So here's a bit of repointing, and this is all done on very old brickwork and this was sand and lime built brickwork and the guys have come along and they've done a nice job, there's a nice bit of weather struck pointing, very hard mix, way too hard in my opinion. These guys, I stopped and had a chat with them when they were doing it 25 years ago, what they used was a tuck pointer and that's what turned me on to using a tuck pointer rather than a little pointing trowel. You know, they slashed that lot in there in no time whatsoever. Yeah, there's a bit of spool in there on that brick but I reckon that spooling was there first before they used the sand and cement. Although I can understand what people are saying and I wouldn't make it as strong as this, I'd put a bit of lime in it and you can see a bit there where it's fallen out so maybe there's something to be said for using the sand and lime on it. I just wonder how the sand and lime would have fared on this job. The back bit, the bit you can see here, which was built of that old Rygate stone, is a thousand years old. Quite remarkable. And I don't know whether this would have been the original stone from a thousand years ago. But you can see that some of it has been replaced all around us and even the bits that have been replaced have actually started to decay again. So what did they do there? That looks to me like all they've done there was a bit of rendering and lined it up. Just thought that they'd taken out the old stone and put in some block work, but clearly not. What they've done is quite a nice job of rendering it. Just put the lines through, even pointed it to make it look, not just lined it through as we would now, just lazily, but actually pointed it up. Unless they're bits of cladding, unless they were actually made and stuck on there as bits of cladding because they look I think that's the case I think that's what they were they were kind of slips if you like that they put on there and the reason I'm thinking that is that you can see the texture so what they've done is taken some stone and cut it into thinner bits and then stuck those over the top of the stone to try and save the stone from the weather but as you can see what's happened here is that the stone has spalled that it's lost any adhesion that that's erosion from the from the weather but people would say yeah so what you've done there my friend is you've trapped in the moisture and now it's the moisture that's pushing the stones off the block work and that could be right it could be the case but yeah I hadn't really noticed that before that that is looking like it needs a bit of work and how do we know how long that's been here that could have been there 50 years so depends what you think reasonable services but one thing you gotta know is that when you've got a building of this age here's a bit of the original that it's a bit of a money pit and uh, fortunately Church of England they got a few bob in fact they own quite a lot of the property around here and a lot of the shops in town they own so they've been getting rent off all those properties for all those years excuse me people if I'm treading on your grave so here you are here's another example of sand and cement pointing being done on old lime mortar and everybody's saying oh that's the kiss of death it really depends on the bricks you're using if they're bricks like this these stocks that's absolutely fine that job no cracking nothing talking about modern buildings as if I don't like modern buildings. This is done by a couple of twins who went to college and they did their building management degrees. They started property developing. With their father, I think, who was an architect, they've done some lovely, lovely work. High Star's the name of the company. This is a, an example. They've done loads of jobs around the town, but they're always just the cut above. They go beyond the minimum. There's one of my pet hates. No need to explain why. What a, what a monstrosity. So there's an example of my least favourite brick, LBC Flittons, London Brick Company. Absolute rubbish as far as this kind of work goes.